Today, we're doing a deep and relaxing stretch without turning into a pretzel and without having to feel really good in the stretch and then 10 seconds later, you're doing something new. Oftentimes, when I'm talking to my clients, one of their biggest pet peeves is that they want a deep and relaxing stretch that gets into the deep layers of the hips, that gets into the hamstrings, the back of the legs, releases tension in the shoulders, but every single one of the moves has them turning into a pretzel, is really complicated, or some of the moves are just not doable for relaxation. Totally get it. As a former yoga fit instructor, I get that when you're doing a flow, it's absolutely wonderful, but a lot of times it can feel more like a workout than a relaxing stretch. So I'm gonna make this an easy no-brainer for you. Today we are going to do a really long, deep stretch that's gonna release the tension in your shoulders, release the tension in your back, your hips, and your legs without complicated yoga moves and without feeling more pain than pleasure. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna begin with a gentle warm up to prepare the muscles to start to deepen the stretch. Take your hands outside of shoulder, holding onto your towel or holding onto your band, and roll your shoulders back. Bring the band way overhead, only as far as you feel comfortable. If you have shoulder issues, you may only get to here or here. If you're very, very tight, then you might only be able to get to here. Wherever you feel the stretch, the dynamic stretch, the movement stretch, that's where you want to go with this slight bend in the elbow. If you have issues with the shoulder as well, you might want to hold in just a little bit more and allow your strong arm, the one that doesn't have issues, usually there's one, to pull you up a little bit. This will start to ask that, that other side, work with me a little bit, get into the stretch a little bit, and let's increase mobility a little bit. So coming all the way up and over. One more thing, if you start to feel this in the top of the neck or in the shoulders, then stop with the band and give me shoulder rolls instead. If you're very tight, that might be the case. There are days that that happens because all of our tension tends to hold in the shoulders and neck. Wherever you feel this, this is perfect. Just warming up the joint, getting blood flow to the muscles. Again, with this increased blood flow, you are reducing your risk of tears and uh, strains that happen when people tend to go into stretches without warming up the body first. This is known as a dynamic stretch. Pull all the way back and forward. That's it. Remember your options. If this is hurting, then you're going just to the shoulder rolls. That's it. And release. Okay, if you're already doing shoulder rolls, great. Otherwise, follow me for front shoulder rolls. Holding on to the shoulders, that's it. The shoulder is a joint that we really want to make sure is warmed up as we do work, especially because we're really going to be asking to release the tension in the top of the shoulders, and you might even feel it down the arms. So let's get the shoulder joint really ready for this and roll back now. That's it. Oh, this feels really, really good. Love it. Warming up the body here and release. Okay, now we're going down to the ground and I promise once we are down, we are not getting back up. So let's go down. <laughs> okay, start by bringing your feet shoulder width apart, sitting back, your weight is on your hands, or you could even be leaning back against that chair that you have, just like this. We're gonna start to warm up those legs now. Allow your legs, your knees to go side to side like a windshield wiper. All of the movement is more of a relaxation movement. What I mean is you're saying, leg, I'm not gonna hold you up anymore, and it gently drops to the side, other side. That's it, so basically you're just letting the tension release each time. And the feet move, that's it. It's a motion from the hips, side, to side, just like that, and notice how I can focus in on my legs because I am propped up against the wall or a sofa or chair. Let me show you from the side now. If you do have your hands here and you're just focusing in on your legs, side to side, that's it. See how it's just like windshield wipers, gently coming to the side. 
And with each side motion, it's warming up your hips, allowing the motion to get deeper into deeper layers, bringing blood flow to your hip. If you do have your hands on the ground and you want a bit more stretch, you can turn your fingertips in towards your bottom and squeeze your shoulder blades back. But I really don't like to focus in on anything but the legs at this point when you're here and sit against the side or back of the wall because quite frankly, again, this is putting pressure on the wrists and if we're trying to loosen things up, that's doing the least of it, right? Okay, side to side. And now gently allow your legs to come right to the side. 90 degree angle with the front leg, 90 degree angle with the back leg. Make sure your hips are facing forward. And if you're very tight, sometimes you'll feel that in the side of the hip. So readjust the hip so that it feels comfortable to stay in this position a while. Now, deep inhale, reach your arms overhead and now bend forward. Still in a warm up for this point, bring your chin to chest, arch the back and roll up. Let's do this six wonderful times to really get into the warm up of the low back now. Deep inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, come forward, chin to chest, arch the back and roll up. Inhale and down, chin to chest, arch the back and roll up. That's it, keep it flowing, keep it going. That's it, only as far as you feel comfortable. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you might know that I have back issues. So it's something I work on, go to a chiropractor for. So this is as low as I plan on going with this one. And then I start to feel too much of a pull in my low back and then I'm coming up. It's the same case with you, only go as far as you feel comfortable. That's it, still getting that nice stretch, chin to chest and up, perfect. One more here, chin to chest, arch the back, and there we go. Let's slowly slide the legs into center and we're switching sides. 90 degree with the front leg, 90 degree with the back. And again, if it's getting into that hip, no matter what direction you pull it in, you can bring this leg back just a, for a little bit further, find that comfortable position. Now deep inhale, reach your arms overhead, dynamic stretch down, chin to chest, arch the back and up again. Inhale, down, arch the back, chin to chest, and rise up. There's always one side that feels like you've got way more flexibility, and there's one side that feels tighter. This one, of course, you can tell which side is my good side for my low back. This is the side that is easier for me to get down. Chin to chest, arch the back, and come up. Maybe you're not feeling this in the low back. Maybe when you come down, you're feeling it in the hip, the glutes, maybe you're feeling it down your side. Wherever you feel it, that's where those muscles are tightest and we're gonna give a little bit more attention to today to get into a little bit deeper. All right, so now that we have done this stretch and warm up on both sides, let's start by leaning forward on this leg. Hold the stretch here. Fingertips are on the ground, only as far as you feel comfortable. Again, no compression on the hands. Again, it's probably, we've been typing a lot. I know I type a lot too. Uh, there's a lot of compression issues for carpal tunnel. We don't want that, don't get into it. So again, you're holding yourself up, but you're not compressing down on your wrists. Hold it here. If you are more flexible, you can come right down onto your forearms. I'm not quite there with you. I'm using my knee. So I have my forearm on my knee and I'm holding here. And that's as much as my back wants to get into. Again, if you're feeling this in the glutes, so in your side, if you're feeling this there, you might not be able to go this low and that's okay too. Just make sure your back is straight while you're stretching out the position. And sometimes people say to me, Alicia, I don't feel it. I'm really not feeling that much of a stretch at all. If that's the case with you, it has to do with the angle that your body's at. It wants to go where it compensates, where it's the most comfortable. So slowly turn your body from one side over to the other, placing more weight on the outside of your knee or the inside until you can feel where that stretch is. Once you've found that place, hold it there. That's where the magic is. That's where we're gonna hold it. And you'll notice I've been holding it here for quite a while. 
90 seconds, that gets into the deepest layer with stretches. And so we're really going to relax into this stretch. Hold it for a very long time. So what happens with stretches, as you're holding it, there's a stretch and reflex to actually contract the muscle afterwards. So the longer you can hold these deep stretches, the more you're asking that contraction to relax and, and that way you get the length in the muscle that stays. So if you've ever done a stretch and you felt really great after, but after a few minutes after the stretch or maybe even an hour you feel like you didn't even stretch, it's probably because the stretches need to be held just a little bit longer to reduce that contraction that happens afterwards with the stretch. Okay, chin to chest, arch the back, and slowly come up. Okay, we've got the other side to do. So remember, we only did the dynamic with that one. So 90 degree with the front and 90 degree with the back and lean forward. That's it. Find that place where it's getting into your low back or your hip, down the side of the hip. And if you can't feel it, then go from side to side. That's it, until you finally found that place that you feel comfortable staying for a while. Gentle pressure on the hands, not too much, so you can come down onto your forearm. I'm using my knee here to hold on with the stretch, and you're holding it here. It's a perfect stretch. Let me move back a bit, so you can really see this, these angles here. You can really see what I'm doing here with my hips coming forward. That's it, and we're gonna hold it here a while. So there are two great types of stretches that I love. The 90 second stretch, like we're doing now to get into the deep, deep layers. And then the dynamic stretches, which you saw earlier, which allows for strength, for, so, sorry, for allows for the stretch in the muscle, but then it warms up the muscle. So every time you go down or up into stretches that are dynamic, you can get a little bit further. The point for mobility, for blood flow. These ones here are to go deep into the muscle and release the tension at, a, at the deepest layer possible. Do you notice something when you're stretching? Maybe at the beginning you were really feeling this, but as we were doing the stretch more and more, you started to feel like it got easier. You could get lower. So if you're not feeling it quite as much anymore, gently rock from side to side once again to find that deeper level of stretch. If you don't feel that there, then bring your chest closer to the ground to hold the stretch lower. Deep inhale and exhale. And sometimes there's that one place where you can get just a tiny bit lower, but it's not quite enough to put those forearms there. That's another reason why I love having a weight here, because then you can take it to the next level by placing your forearms onto the weight, holding it in that position because it's raised up high. You can even do that with the roll, with the circular ones as well, as long as they're high enough off the ground that they can do that midpoint. Okay, chin to chest, arch the back and roll up. Whew, let's do a few side to side rock just to get the hips moving again because we've been holding it for so long. And now let's cross the legs in. Holding it here, we're gonna grab one of the weights and focus in on the upper body. Gently place the weight on your upper traps, so the muscle up in here. Roll your shoulder way back, protect the joint. This is a stretch where you're gonna you're going to definitely feel that it, your, your upper shoulders and traps need attention. Move the weight side to side, maybe roll it down and up until you feel that place where it definitely needs some love and attention. Roll the shoulder back, take the hand that has the weight on the shoulder and reach the fingertips out. Shoulder roll back and down and hold the position. Deep inhale. And as you exhale, feel the muscles relax. It deepens the stretch. If you're not quite feeling a place yet, that's when you need to move the weight side to side or roll it up and down. And I find that the muscles in the neck and in the upper traps, they tend to release pretty easily. 
when they have this weight on there. So if over time you feel like, okay, that was enough, I feel that there, I need to move on to a new place, then feel free to move the weight again. Find a new place that needs some love and attention that feels tight and hold it there. Deep inhale. And exhale. As you continue to hold the stretch, if you're in the right place, great. If you want more depth, or maybe it's not quite reaching that amazing place yet, bring your chin to your opposite shoulder and notice how the stretch changes. Perfect. This is when I feel a lot more in the front of the neck. Or maybe you feel it more in the side of the neck. Bring the chin up towards the ceiling on a side angle there and see if that changes where you feel it. The back of the traps, up the neck. And then chin back into center, unless you're already still there. And then bring your ear up. Okay, hold on to the weight with both hands. And very gently, we're gonna switch sides. Before we switch sides, Give me another shoulder roll. See how that side feels. Does it feel a little bit looser? Does it need more attention? You can always go back and do these stretches as much as you want. Okay, let's put the weight on the opposite shoulder. Ear comes to shoulder once that weight is there and your hand is gonna come down towards the ground. And once again, I always find there's that one side that's really easy, feels like it's giving you no problems at all, and that other side that feels so much more tension. If this side isn't feeling it as much, or maybe not at all, if you're not feeling it at all, go back to the side that was tighter that needs extra love. You can use this time to focus in on that side. Otherwise, from here, let's see if it's the placement first of the chin. So bring your chin down to your shoulder and see if that changes the stretch. See if you feel it more on that side. Or maybe for you, it was up, looking up at the sky. Wherever you feel it most, that's where you want to hold it, getting deep into the stretch. And depending on how tight you are, you might have what's called referred pain, so pain that goes down your arm. Just a gentle, gentle feeling like, yeah, okay, I am definitely stretching here. Kind of like what happens when you go to a massage therapist and they push into you. Same feeling. a while and again as you continue to hold it it might start to feel so much easier to get into in that position and you'll need to readjust the weight move it around gently and find that perfect spot enough that you can feel that gentle pressure on your shoulder. So if you've got a three pound or a five pound, you might actually need to ask the husband or a friend to gently push on the weight very, very gently to give you that extra stretch. So for example, I'm using a 12 pound weight for this one and it feels perfect. All right, now bring your ear into, shoulder, into center and let's take the weight down. Roll your shoulders, see how your neck feels, side to side. Let's do a few gentle neck rolls. Chin to chest, down towards the shoulder, and then slowly come all the way around, ear to the opposite shoulder. We're gonna stay just rolling forward. That's it, side to side. And notice if, if doing these gentle side to side motions, ear to shoulder, if you feel a stretch at all, or if it just feels like another dynamic mobility movement, 
and try opening or closing your mouth in different positions and see how that changes the stretch. So mouth open to the side. Does it pull any more in your neck? Now try closing your mouth. chair or your wall. Let me show you quickly what to do if you're using the wall. You're going to slide as close as you can to the wall, very, very closely. And then from there you'll lie down and gently lift one leg up, followed by the other. This can easily be done by using your chair as well. All you're going to do is come with your chair or your sofa and we're not going to focus on length with the leg as much as we're going to focus in on getting into the back of the leg. So when I'm here, I still feel this in the hamstrings, the back of the leg. Then what we're going to do, once you've found your perfect position, wall or chair, cross the opposite leg over, just like this, and then bend the leg. So hold this position here. Again, getting in to the hips and the glutes. I'm going to show you what this looks like against the wall. Again, you come close to the wall, wherever that feels comfortable for you, and then you're going to cross that leg and bend the knee as much as you feel comfortable. When you're holding this position, it is so important to check in with your bottom. So let me do this one more time while you're holding the stretch. One leg is straight. Opposite leg is going to cross over just like that and then bend wherever feels comfortable. Now we're going to check in on the bottom. The bottom should still stay connected to the ground. So if you're feeling really tight, it's easy for that leg to want to come up and lift the back and lift your bottom way up. And that that's actually not, it's, it's counterintuitive to what we're trying to do with the stretch. We're really trying to focus in on getting into the glutes. If it's too intense and your bottom is lifting up, then straighten out the leg more. We're really focusing in on the glute muscles. You're gonna feel it in the side here. If you're loosening those glute muscles, you might not feel it, and so you might wanna gently push into your knee, and then that way it gets into a deeper layer of that stretch. Wherever it feels most comfortable for you. We're gonna be holding it here a while. Something also starts to happen as we hold this stretch for a while. You might not feel it as deeply and you might need a little bit more. And that is what's so great about having your leg being the deciding factor for the depth of the stretch. Because the more you bend the knee, the more you're gonna get deeper into that stretch. You can bend it all the way up. As long as your glutes and your low back are connected to the ground and you're feeling that stretch, it's a very nice stretch. Check in while we're here that it's the ankle that's connected to your thigh. So you don't want it to be your foot because that's going to press your foot in an awkward position and it's, it's actually, it could hurt your ankle. So make sure that your foot is fully off, you have full mobility of the foot. Your ankle is what is connected to the thigh. That's a deep inhale. And with the exhales, try and relax deeper into the stretch. If it starts to feel too much, if you've gone too deep in the stretch, sometimes what happens is those muscles start to contract more because it has to do with, instead of stretching, your muscles are trying to protect the joints and so they're tightening. So loosen up on the stretch. If you go a little bit less deep into that stretch, it's gonna allow your muscle time to, to deactivate that reflex of strengthening and contracting the muscle, and it's going to allow the stretch to eventually become deeper over time. As you continue to hold it, 
you want, you can try and figure out that perfect position, play with the foot here. I like to use a wall a lot better when I'm doing these stretches. So keep, continue to hold the stretch and let me show you why. Because you can always push away from the wall when you're in the position. You can always push away from the wall, but notice how the wall has a lot more support. If I push on that chair, then that chair is going to go far away. It's not supported against anything. Because the wall is not going anywhere, then it almost acts as somebody who is gently helping me with this stretch and pushing my foot towards me. So it deepens that stretch and it allows me to relax and do my part, which is focus on just bottom to crown and stretch deepening, finding that perfect position. Okay, so straighten out the leg. That's it, we're gonna do the opposite side now. So once again, the leg that's not working, that's gonna act as your stretch, your stretch helper. It's gonna go onto the chair, go onto a pole. That's it, cross the opposite leg. You want the ankle to be connected to the thigh. And then once you found that perfect position, you can start to bend your knee to get into the stretch, looking for the glutes to feel it, so the side, your hips are really gonna feel this stretch. It's a great, great stretch. Hold it here, and then if your bottom has lifted up, so if you notice how your bottom is way up, then straighten out the leg more until the stretch becomes a little bit deeper and you can then take it to the next level. Shoulders roll back and down. Deep inhale. Once again, there's always that one side that feels it so much more than the other. If this is the side, you might need your leg completely straight for the time that we're here, or bend a lot if it's the side that's easier, as long as the bottom's connected to the ground. Great. Notice how it compresses your back gently on the ground, like a gentle massage as well. So this is releasing the low back, Getting into your hips, your glutes, maybe all the way down the leg, depending on where you're tight again. Maybe all the way down your shin. It's a perfect stretch. This is one of my favorites. And if you're not quite feeling it too, you can always take your hand and gently push into your knee and push that knee away. That's it, and then over time, maybe you're starting to feel that you need a little bit more, and then you can bend further. And here's where I was talking about with the chair. So now if I were to do further, that chair would move far away. If you have a couch propped up somewhere, or again, if you're using this against the wall, it's very easy to have your foot. There you go, that foot now, it's, it's completely connected. It's pushing into the wall and it allows the stretch to deepen. It's deep, so deep that I'm just checking in with my bottom, that my bottom has it lifted and the shoulders are rolled back. Perfect. I highly recommend the wall if you have the ability to use a wall. It is seriously one of my favorite helpers when it comes to stretching. Perfect. And Let's release. So gently bring your foot down, come down to the side, just like that. Excellent. And now you're gonna need your towel. So grab your towel or your band, whatever you have. I'm just gonna move this chair out of the way. And let's get in to the hamstrings. Those hamstrings are always so tight. So place your towel around your foot or a band. I love using these bands. These bands are to help with pull-up work, but they, for stretching, are wonderful because they are so long. So we're gonna start by extending out one leg, feel it in the back of the hamstrings, and check in with your foot that the band or the towel is at the ball of the foot. Your toes have full freedom to move and relax. If the band is too high on the toes, then you're gonna to start to contract your toes. That's when you start to get into feet cramps or toe cramps. And you don't want that. <laughs> this is all about stretching out. So the toes are nice and relaxed and that towel or the band is on the ball of the foot, just like that. 
Slight bend in the knee always to protect your knee. Shoulders roll back. So if you've got a really small towel, you might notice that it rounds you up. So try and find a beach towel or even a blanket that you can use that pulls you right down if that's what you're doing, if that's what you're using. And then at that point, because of the thickness of a beach towel, you might need to hold it with both hands just like this, rolling your shoulder back. The important part is that you feel it in the hamstrings. Some people say, oh, but I feel it in the back of the knee. I don't feel it in the hamstrings. Well, that's actually one of the areas where you're getting into that insert, that attachment with the hamstring. So you could definitely be feeling it in the back of the knee. You might also be feeling it in the back of the knee if it's actually your calf that's really tight. So you might even be feeling it down the calf. So there's a lot of stuff going on back and behind the knee where things are joining and crossing. And so you might be feeling it from either the calf or the hamstring. Let's do a quick check to see if we can figure out what one. Point the toe and see if that releases the tension behind the knee. And then flex the knee again. Does that create more tension? If not, maybe it's coming from the hamstrings then. You just want to make sure that you have a slight bend in the knee just to protect the joint. Perfect. Wherever you're feeling it, the back of the legs, it's usually one of those areas that needs the most love when it comes to stretching. Notice how my opposite leg, my foot is flat again to protect the low back. If you don't have low back issues or if the front of your hip gets very, very tight, then extend that opposite leg out. That will get into your hip flexor so you might even feel that stretch in the front of the hip now. And at the same time, it deepens the stretch just a little bit. Do whatever feels most comfortable for you. it and now of course we're going to deepen the stretch to take the leg very slowly to the side notice how my hip stays connected to the ground and the shoulder of the opposite the shoulder of the same side is connected to the ground so my right shoulder is connected to the ground and my right hip stays connected to the ground it's as far as I'm going with this and then see if that stretch changes is it down the side of your leg maybe the side of your shin. Where are you feeling this now? Perfect, so sometimes if your hip flexors are tight too, you might start to feel it in the hip flexors. Uh, I hear that a lot, so we're not gonna hold this one for too long. Bend your knee, come back into center, and let's switch sides. Opposite side, get your towel or the band, wrapped around your leg. That's it, around the ball of the foot. Toes can wiggle. And foot is in center, roll your shoulders way back and down. Allowing your shoulders to stay in alignment. We just finished stretching them out, so it would be so great if they stayed in alignment. Slight bend in the knee to protect the joint. That's it. And if you'd like more, you can straighten out that leg, get into the hip flexor that might have just gotten a bit tight. All right, we're gonna hold it here. Shoulders roll back and down, that's it. Once again, check in, where are you feeling the stretch on this side? Is it in the belly of your hamstring, up down, up here, or down in the knee? Where do you feel it most? If it's behind the knee, let's check in to see if we can figure out whether it's the calf that's tight. Point your toe and then flex the toe. Does it change the feeling of the stretch if you feel it in the back of the knee? Point the toe and flex the foot. Where do you feel that stretch now? So in one leg is always different than the other. In the right leg, for example, I was feeling it in the belly of my hamstring, right in the middle, and this one, it's right in the calf here. So pay special attention to the areas that are tied throughout the stretch routine because throughout your day then, you can start to figure out what could I be doing that could be tightening those muscles. Am I maybe pointing my toes underneath the chair when I'm at my desk or Am I popping one leg on something? 
Am I driving using one foot more than the other so it gets into the calf a little bit more? Each side is different. Okay, now let's extend the opposite arm, the same arm as the leg that's out. I don't know why I can't say that today. And then gently bring your leg over to the side, very slowly, still supporting it with the band or the towel. And you can even turn your head if you want to, to get into the neck. It's so important to make sure that your hip stays connected to the ground, that your shoulder stays connected to the ground. your side. Okay, we're going to get in now into the back. So if you have a knee issue with this, you might want to grab a pillow or something to prop yourself with because we will be going into child's pose for this. A lot of times this ends up hurting or compressing the knee more because the quads are tight, so the front of the leg. If that's the case, what we're going to do is start with the knee that has some of the issues. Bring that knee forward. Let me move the weights so you can see here. Bring that knee forward just like this and the opposite leg goes back. And then come down, hands forward. You might notice how you are way up on this side, still getting into the back, but the knee, it doesn't need to move into full flexion. And so you're protecting that knee a little bit. If it's still hurting, then swap sides and still get into the back stretch. Opposite knee can come back and come into the child's pose, getting into the low back position. Make sure your hips are facing forward. Do both sides, both knees together. Reach your fingertips out, forehead and the crest of your nose on the mat. Sit back as much as you feel comfortable. And of course, if you have knee issues, then follow the knee that needs wherever that one feels the most comfortable. mobile, flexible, and relaxed without turning into Gumby. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.